Hey, morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're continuing episode four on radio direction finding or RDF. And I thought it might be fun to take out the Jeep and do a long range triangulation using a NOAA weather radio station. So let's go ahead and check it out. I'll show you some of the gear I'm using. All right, so the gear is gonna be pretty straightforward. We're gonna be using the same Quangsheng radio because it has a nice RSSI meter. We're gonna use the same amateur radio VHF loop antenna for null hunting. And we're gonna be using the Sunto MC2 compass. I wanna capture my latitude and longitude at multiple positions, and then also capture the bearing here. I've also written some really cool software on uh, the MCOM tools platform using the mapping technology so I can plot the bearings really quickly. And then the frequency we're gonna be using for this station is 162.550. And yeah, I know that's outside of the amateur radio bands and I'm gonna be using amateur radio equipment, but that's part of the exercise. And if you guys are into it for an emergency communications, consider checking out the NOAA broadcast stations in your area. I'll throw them up on the screen. I actually don't know where this is located, but I wanted to see if I can get a general idea and fix on its location. All right, let's get going. So we're gonna turn on the radio. We're gonna hear a little bit of the NOAA weather broadcast. Salt River. And we're just gonna do the 360. We're losing it. Right there. All right, so that's our bearing. So I took our bearing and we are at 162 degrees. So let's go ahead and plot that on the map. So we've got our latitude and longitude and a bearing of 162. We're gonna go ahead and open up our application. It is called ET-RDF. Click that guy and it will plot my position on the map. It has already done that. And then we can just drop in our bearing here, 162, and we'll hit plot line. And we get a forward azimuth going out 50 miles and a reverse azimuth going out another 50. We can even scroll out. So guys, the plan is to go out probably in one direction at least 10 or 12 miles and repeat the process. Guys, it's getting really warm, so we're going to have to speed this video up. So I'm at my second position. I drove out about nine miles in an eastern direction, so we're going to do the exact same thing. Turn on the radio, find that null or dead spot, and then plot it on the map. All right, this is about minus... 118 db so about as close as we're gonna get all right folks so i've got my second position here and also a bearing of 172 so the first thing we're gonna do since we've got our old line still there we're gonna go to my position and it should reset me to 33.813 yep that looks right and then we'll put a bearing of 172 and hopefully those two will intersect and it looks like we've got an intersection down here uh, just east of AZ-51. So uh, I think the plan is going to be probably to, I don't know, go a little bit farther south or yeah, south and maybe go east or west and figure out if we can get a third point uh, to triangulate the signal. All right, guys, we're at our last position where we're going to take a bearing and uh, somewhere in Scottsdale. So about 10 miles out, roughly southeast again, and uh, hopefully this third line is gonna give us a fix. I still don't know where this station is. So we're gonna have to do some research after the fact to actually see how close we got. Okay, so this is roughly the position where I'm losing the signal, and it's actually not in the direction I thought it was going to be. Let's turn that off. But I'm going to take it anyway, and that's why I did a forward and reverse azimuth, and it's coming in at about 30 degrees. So we'll check it out. 
like I said, it's warming up. So I transitioned into the vehicle and it's not as easy as it looks. So we have the uh, first two uh, bearings plotted. We're gonna go switch to my position here. And it did move us over to 33.741 latitude by minus 111.919. So I'm out here in this corner. And uh, we've got that reverse or the azimuth, which has been kind of going in the wrong direction, which is fine because when you're picking up radio signals, you really don't know which, which way it's going. So typically you want to do a 180 the other way. So we'll put in 30 here. And let's plot that line. Okay, not bad. So you can see the green arrow is going in this direction, but the point of intersection is actually right there. So I am very curious to see how well that uh, lines up with whether that uh, NOAA weather radio station is in that location. Should be fun. I'm considering going over to a local Starbucks on the way back and uh, trying to figure out where the radio station, at least in my area, that's on 162.550 is located and see how we got close how close we got to that pin all right so i'm at the starbucks time to fire up the uh, hot spot on the flip phone found that the station is actually kilo echo charlie nine or four pulled it up over here on the internet machine and found that it is located on south mountain well guys, that Starbucks was way too noisy to film in. Uh, the audio was ruined with uh, the hipster doofus music and just all of the chatter, which is understandable. Uh, I personally like peace and quiet and can't stand noise pollution, but um, that was an interesting exercise. It wasn't a 100% success, but what it was able to do was give me information to say, hey, we it's time to start stepping up our tools. And while we can do a lot with a $20 radio, a loop antenna and a compass, uh, when we're really interested in doing radio direction finding, we need something a little bit more uh, sophisticated. So the first thing I did was I plotted the three positions on the map with those bearings. Uh, I even had the position of where I was at the Starbucks, and I had to find out the position of where that transmitter was actually located. So popped on to uh, Google after I had tethered my laptop with my flip phone's hotspot. That's right, flip phone hotspot and I was able to find the uh, radio station that was on that frequency and then also found the location which is South Mountain. So a little mountain down in the Phoenix area. Uh, at that point, it was just a matter of finding the latitude and longitude. So I cheated and went to chat GPT and asked it in plain English what the coordinates were and plotted it. Now the three points of intersection were not perfect. Uh, two of them actually did box it in kind of nicely, but the actual point of intersection was off. Again, we have a lot of terrain features here in the area. So in general, I would say this was a success because it did give us the general direction of where that transmitter was. And with a lot more work, uh, we would be able to do it. And the whole reason why I've been doing this series is that I want to prove that unless you have some real high speed gear, it's gonna be very difficult. The reason why I chose the NOAA weather broadcast is because it is a continuous transmission that's powerful enough for me to uh, pop up or turn on my radio and get a sense of signal strength in my area. So I'm gonna to upgrade to the Kraken SDR. I'm gonna use channel funds to buy that uh, probably next month sometime in September. And uh, we're gonna give that a try because it's gonna be a more instantaneous reading. Uh, because bottom line is people are not going to be transmitting continuously like something like an FM broadcast station like this NOAA weather uh, channel here. So hopefully you guys got something out of it. If nothing else, uh, it was kind of fun playing with some new uh, throwaway software I just wrote together in a couple of hours and just driving around town to have a good old morning. Anyways, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Big thanks to you guys over on Buy Me Coffee. Could not do this without you. Cheers all.